Right in this video we're going to discuss multiplying polynomials and the key to multiplying polynomials is recalling the distributive property. Recall the distributive property says if you have a times b plus c, so like this one term times you know two, two or more terms inside the parentheses here, then we literally distribute the a through. We get a times b which gives you a b plus a times c which gives you a c. Right, that's the distributive property, and that is the key property that we're going to need um, when multiplying polynomials. All right, so let's do some examples. All right, we're going to multiply negative 4x squared times x cubed minus 3x plus 2. And we're just doing the distributive property here because you have one term times these three terms. We're literally going to distribute it through. When you do that, you get negative 4x squared times x cubed which would be negative 4x to the fifth, negative 4x squared times negative 3x, negative times a negative is a positive, 4 times 3 gives you 12, x squared times x gives you x cubed, and then negative 4x squared times a positive 2 gives you a negative 8x squared. All right? Everybody see that? All right, it's just the distributive property and using those rules uh, of exponents from before. All right, so let's try this one. All right, so now I've, I've got, um, it's not a monomial that's out here in front. It's, it's you got two terms. This is, I would actually say this is a binomial times a binomial, but we can still use the distributive property. We can think of this 4x plus 5, right? Think of this 4x plus 5, the second binomial here is one, one thing, and we need all of this to multiply times the 3x, and then we need all of this 4x plus 5 to be multiplied by the 2. That's the distributive property. We're literally distributing this entire 4x plus 5 through to all the pieces over here on the left one. And we could formally write it out as, say, 3x times 4x plus 5, right, and then plus 2 times 4x plus 5. This step that I'm writing here is showing the actual distributive property at work here. We're literally taking 4x plus 5 and distributing it through to um, be multiplied times the 3x and then times the 2. You see that? And then uh, we just uh, simplify this up. Now you have 3x times 4x plus 5. We'll just use the distributive property on that and we get 12x squared plus 15x and then plus 2, so 2 times 4x plus 5, so that'd be what? Plus 8x plus 10, right? When you multiply all those out, right? These two terms from here and these 8x plus 10 from this part right there. And then we notice that, hey, 15x and, and 8x will add up. We can combine, like, combine those like terms. So we have 12x squared plus 23x plus 10. And that is our resultant polynomial from multiplying up these two uh, binomials up at the top. All right. So really, though, uh, I put this red line in here just so you could see the distributive property in action. But here's really what we're gonna we're gonna end up doing. Notice that we really go 3x times 4x gives us the 12x squared, and then we have 3x times the 5, which gives us the 15x. Everybody see that? And then we go back and take the 2, or the second term here, and, multi and distribute it through. So we have 2 times 4x, which gives you the 8x, and 2 times 5, which gives you the 10. And that's really how we're going to think about it when we multiply uh, these things together. All right, so let's try this one. All right, so we've got this, we've got this y right here that we can distribute through to the 5y plus 2. So y times 5y would be 5y squared and then y times 7 which would be 7y. So that's just distributing the y through. Now we need to go back and distribute this negative 2 through, right? So we have negative 2 times 5y which is going to be negative 10y and then negative 2 times positive 7 which would be negative 14. Everybody see how that happened? And then we combine up like terms and I have 5y squared uh, minus 3y minus 14. And that is the resultant polynomial for multiplying those out. So we're using the distributive property twice is really what's happening. All right? All right, so let's try this one. What's the base for that exponent of 2? 
That's right, the base is x minus 3. It's all of this is x minus 3. That 2 being the exponent and the base being x minus 3 means we could rewrite this as the base times itself. Right? We literally could rewrite it as x minus 3 times x minus 3. And then this looks like, well, we're just multiplying two polynomials together, two, two binomials to be specific. Right? And then we just use the distributive property twice. You have x times x, which would give you x squared. You have x times negative 3, which would give you negative 3x. Then we have this negative 3 times x, which gives you another negative 3x. And then we have negative 3 times negative 3, which gives you a positive 9. And then we can combine like terms and get x squared minus 6x plus 9 is what this multiplies out to. Right? The most common mistake made uh, on, on multiplying out something like this is students will write down x squared plus 9. Just squaring the x to give you x squared, squaring the negative 3 to give you the plus 9, and just leave it like that. You're squaring each of the individual tops. But that, that, that's confusing up the property for raising a product to a power. Um, back with uh, pro one of the rules of exponents that we talked about before. But that property only applied when the base here was a product. Remember me talking about that back then? Right? That, this base here is not a product. This base is a, a difference. Right? You're, it's, it's a sum. Actually, you have two terms. Right? So if the base is a product, then yes, that rule that we talked about before does apply. But uh, when the base is not a product, uh, we have to rewrite the base times itself, however many number of times we're supposed to multiply it by itself, all dependent on the exponent up here, and then multiply out polynomials. Right? Everybody see this is not the same thing as this. So very, very important we understand the difference. Okay? Let's do one more. All right. So now we have a binomial times a trinomial. But, but the concept stays the same. No matter if you have 15 terms here times 28 terms here, the concept stays the same. It's just that would take a lot longer to do. And that concept is we're going to take this first term from this first polynomial here and distribute it through all the terms on the other polynomial. So x times x squared gives you x cubed. x times negative 3x gives you negative 3x squared x times 7 gives you plus 7x. Right? So that's distributing the x through. But now we need to go back and take the next term in our polynomial here on the left, the 2, and distribute it through with the other polynomial. So we have 2 times x squared, which would be plus 2x squared, 2 times negative 3x, which would be minus 6x, and 2 times 7, which would be plus 14. Everybody see how that happened? And if you had a, a third term here instead of two, you would just now take that third term and distribute it through to all of these terms, and you have another three terms sitting out here. Follow the logic? The concept's going to stay exactly the same no matter how many terms each polynomial has that you're multiplying together. All right? So now just go through and combine like terms. So we have x cubed, we have negative 3x squared, positive 2x squared gives you a negative x squared. Positive 7x and negative 6x gives us a negative, uh, excuse me, a positive x, and then 14 left over. So x cubed minus x squared plus x plus 14, and that would be what these two things up here multiply out to be. All right, all right, that's it. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.